Hi Media Mail Gang, it is Katie with Katie Reads and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are book sourcing. I know it's crazy. I have taken on two storage units full of books. I am up to my eyeballs in books, so why am I out book sourcing? Well, today I decided to support my local library. The last Friday of every month, they usually have a book sale. It's typically last Saturday, but today they're doing Friday and Saturday. So that tells me they have a lot of books to get rid of. And in recent situations with learning whatnot and understanding what my whatnot buyers like, I am finding that sci-fi, fantasy, and horror is doing a lot better on whatnot than other book categories. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely selling antique and vintage and often. But with whatnot and trying to grow that platform, I wanna bring in different buyers. I don't wanna bring in only antique buyers or only vintage buyers or only children's book buyers. I wanna bring in a variety of buyers so that way when I am doing a variety of shows every single month, doing different themes and different types of books, I can get a lot of different attention from a lot of different followers. So I say all that to say today we are sourcing specifically for Whatnot and a little bit for Amazon. And we will be looking mostly for hardcover books, hardcover horror and fantasy. Sci-fi, I'll look for hardcover and paperback. The sci-fi buyers seem to like paperback. I was talking to my friend Thomas, Hidden Treasures. Make sure to give him a follow on Instagram. He was talking a little bit about how sci-fi buyers seem to like paperback because it's a little bit smaller, easy to carry, easier to store. Those are like the people that like to collect paperback. So I'm going to focus on paperback, but if I do find some hardcover for a decent price, I'm definitely going to grab it, especially first editions that have a dust jacket. I am going to be very picky at this sale. I am only bringing $20. I am not going to spend more than $20 at this sale. I do recommend that you understand all the different libraries in your area and their book sale schedule. A lot of libraries have what's called friends of the library and those are usually the organizations or volunteer groups that will perform the book sale every single month for that library. It's a fundraiser, it's a way for the library to liquidate books that they're discarding or books that they've received by donation and can't put on their shelves for people to check out. So instead they do them through book sales. So with that said, we will get into it. We will get to the sale and I will show you guys what I'm able to find and we'll do a wrap up at the end of the video, a typical sourcing video. It's been so long since I've done this. So I'm really excited to take you guys with me. Let's go.
Enjoy the sunshine. Hope to the next. <laughs>
All right, you guys, we have left the sale. I spent $14 and I got a ton of books 
and 10 magazines and then you guys saw that I grabbed a bunch of those cute little pins that I will probably do either as giveaways they were 100% free so I'll either do them as giveaways or I'll show a few of them in my ephemera show and, and see if there's any interest I know someone out there wants those cute little pins so I grabbed the ones that were kind of book related or Michigan with dates that's kind of cool some people like to grab those for along with like ephemera make sure to go follow me on whatnot guys I have a lot of my shows already pre-scheduled and what I sourced today is going to show up in a variety of the upcoming shows so make sure you follow me and bookmark whatever you might be interested in. I do ephemera, I do crafts, and I do books. So pick what show might fit your needs or your interests and definitely continue to watch for upcoming things. I always try, and I'm doing pretty good about it right now, I always try to list my items in my store ahead of time for the upcoming auction. I try to give people the opportunity to do pre-bids and frankly it's just easier on me. I'm a lot more organized and I can just go through things quickly and have everything kind of already pre-stacked and organized for upcoming shows. So I've liked that process so far and it's been going okay. Side note for Amazon FBA real quick, the nonfiction section was kind of small at the sale. Nonfiction does best for me on Amazon. I did scan a few books and unfortunately they were about 4 to $5 profit. A lot of them are hardcover, so I was going to be spending a dollar on those. So between the dollar and then having to send it in, I do have to factor in the cheaper shipping that Amazon offers. That's usually around four bucks to send in a whole box to Amazon. So it's not super expensive, but I would need to get quite a few books to kind of justify sending it in. I can't just send in a couple books at a time. I mean, you could but I would need to be getting them for like 25 cents a piece because of the shipping and kind of, you know, I, like I said, I was going to be picky at the sale. So as far as Amazon FBA, I chose to pass on the sale and just focus exclusively on whatnot and focus on more of like the horror, thriller, and sci-fi. And I feel like I made a really good killing with the sci-fi. I'm learning the genre. I don't personally enjoy fantasy or sci-fi, so I never read it, but I'm learning a lot about the different authors and I'm hoping that I made some good picks. I don't know, maybe you guys can tell me in the comments. I'm gonna go back to the house and show you guys what I found, and if you have any interest in the books that I am showing, make sure you follow me on Whatnot so you can buy them. All right guys, next clip, we'll see ya. So these stickers are for their every single day book sales that they may have somewhere in the library. They're pretty easy to get off, they're not too bad. Uh, and then they have one really big sale, which they do the last Saturday of every month, or like this month they decided to do it for two days because they had quite a few books. Um, so these stickers will come off pretty easily and that will make the value go up a little bit on these. We have Stephen King just after sunset. And then we have The Witch's Companion, which is the official guide to um, Anne Rice. Um... The Mayfair Witches. So this is actually a really cool book. I actually have this in my personal collection. So to find this again was a really cool find. Um, and then the X-Files Ground Zero. And then a paperback of the Bachman books. Um, these are all four of the books by Stephen King when he was writing under Stephen Bachman, or when he was writing under Richard Bachman. So you've got Rage, The Long Walk, Roadwork, and The Running Man. Then we have some paperbacks, Anne Rice and Stephen King. Um, so to circle back real quick, this is gonna be for more personal use. I'm gonna get a lot of uses out of this. So value on that is kind of to be determined. Um, all of these I'm gonna run for a minimum of $3 starts on whatnot. So they could go for at least three bucks or they could go for a little bit more. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three times seven is 21. And we're already in the profit with just these selling. And I know they will sell because my following enjoys these authors and these types of books. So yeah, I, I'm already in the profit just with this stack. Um, Anne Rice and Stephen King, the paperbacks, I will run them for $2. This one's a little beat up. I almost didn't grab it. But I decided to give it a shot. And then the same with Stephen King. 
the um, the spine is really important when it comes to paperbacks and the outside pages. The outside pages were really good. The spine is typical with the paperback and the cover was still really crispy and nice. So we'll give it a shot and see how it goes. We'll run each of these for $2 starts more than likely. Then I just kind of went crazy with the, um, let me bring my ring light so you can see it a little bit better. I just kind of went crazy with all the different um, sci-fi books, guys. I just kind of grabbed a little bit of everything. Uh, so these are kind of the one-off books that I didn't see that they were part of a series or a book one or a book two or anything like that. Um, a lot of these are in very good condition. I was really picky about the condition. There was some Isaac Asimov, as you guys saw. This one has some damage, but I still think it could go for two bucks. Um, you guys saw the Isaac Asimov that I wanted to grab, but unfortunately the condition was just really poor with a lot of them. And I frankly don't like selling what I wouldn't want to buy. And then I also just can't expect people to pay a certain price point based on condition. Uh, if they had a large lot of the, this is a really, really cool cover too. If they had a really large lot of Isaac's stuff, I probably would have grabbed it and then tried to sell it as a lot. Uh, but in this case, there was only a few and I just decided to keep it moving. And then we got a vintage one here. I need to do some research on some of these authors and some of these books to make sure that none of these are like really heavy hitters, really rare and vintage. Uh, so I'm going to do a little bit of research before they end up on whatnot. But um, assuming they're all your typical mass market paperback book, these will all have $2 starts as well. Then we have some X-Files. Now I know X-Files has a series uh, and this one could kind of be all over the place as far as these different books, but they're all standalone. So even if they're book number five or ten in a series, they're standalone. One doesn't really rely on the other for you to be able to read. It's more about being numbered for collection purposes. So those I don't mind grabbing out of order. Uh, this is all by David Drake. I don't know this author. Again, I'm going to have to do some research on him, but I grabbed all of his because they seemed really cool. They're sci-fi. They were in good condition overall, and I liked how some were kind of like spacey, and then he has like a dragon one, so it, so it looks like he writes a little bit of a variety. And then Katyana, uh, or Katya, sorry, she has this book one and book two set here, and I like supporting female authors and kind of putting, you know, female authors, um, trying to make it as much 50-50 as possible between female and male authors in my shows. So this is really cool, and if someone's interested in starting her series and checking it out, I'm going to try and do both of these for a $5 start and see what we can do. And the same with this one, this Elf Quest. It is out of order. This is volume five. That's volume three. Um, but it would still be a beginner start for someone that's interested in the series. So I'll probably do a $5 start for both of these. And uh, yeah, overall, they're really good condition. So we'll see how that goes. All of these were free. So I'm thinking like giveaways or maybe at an ephemera show on whatnot. Um, a lot of different things that I could do with these. And most of them are in good condition on the front and the back. So pretty cool, fine, for free. You know, I can't complain about that. Even selling them at a dollar a piece, you know, that's still some decent, some decent dough. And then this is book one of the Destiny Dice. Uh, again, going to do some research. But this one seemed pretty cool. And we will have that up for $2. As well as this one. This is book one. Um, I try to grab book one of different series as much as possible, even with horror and things like that, just because a lot of people want that, obviously, because they, if they're beginning a series, you have to start with book one. And then this is all the ephemera that I picked up for 10 cents a piece. Really excited about these. I will try and sell these during an ephemera show on whatnot. The biggest thing is people love the pictures, the illustrations, the advertisements. Uh, maybe even the articles. I mean, depending on the um, edition of the magazine, there may be an article or a story in there that someone wants. So pretty cool. Science Digest, I've never heard of this. I'm going to do a little bit of research with some of these just to make sure I don't have any heavy hitters that need to go up on eBay. But otherwise, they're going to go into my ephemera show. And then National Geographic, these are all from the 1940s. 
we have September, October, two of the Septembers, and August, and then October, and then we have this Mechanics Illustrated, pretty cool, a lot of illustrations again, um, cool photos, graphics, advertisements, just all types of really cool stuff. These sell like hotcakes in my ephemera shows. So I'm really excited to be able to be able to offer this. This whole entire stack was a dollar. I typically start my ephemera around three dollars um, and the prices typically go up, especially once they see what's inside. I always flip through the pages and show what's inside. Um, so I guesstimate most of these will sell between the three and five dollar range. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and drop a comment. Let me know what you think my best find of the day was. Obviously, my potential profit is there, paying $14 for all of that. I'm really excited. So let me know what you thought and how often, if you're selling on whatnot, how often are you sourcing for whatnot or are you sourcing at all for whatnot? What is your whatnot strategy if you're a whatnot seller? Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next one.